ready for this super featherweight contest isaac dowona is the man coming into the ring you know if we enjoy the lightweight contest between Shave Kwe and then Benjamin Lamte. This is expected to be a cracker. This is where I put my money. I'm expecting a four star buffet. You know, I told you it was going to be a sushi sort of um, boxing bout in the lightweight contest. And this super featherweight final eliminator will be tough. And that's the man from the Zongo. Isaac Dowona from the bronze boxing gym. Well, so the man from the Bronx gym. He just can't stand. Symphony. He's in. He's ready for this fight. He doesn't want to really look any of his focus. What you want and what you're looking for, you're definitely going to get in the ring. His He's nickname, a fireman, isn't it? His nickname Zongo Fire. And we hope he's able to he banish his credentials today just not to be extinguished by Michael Menz, Michael Lanza. Well, and that's the entry of Zongo Fire Isaac Dowona. So the boxer fighting out of the other corner. Put your hands together as we welcome Michael, the one bullet, and Sam. This The crowd favorites. He's got everybody off his seat. And that's Michael Ansa. With all the backing from the crowd, would he be able to do something exceptional? No, he's never well, disappointed me. Yeah, of course, you have to look at his work rate, 28 years of age. And so far, he's been able to produce something extraordinary for himself. He's got some impressive uh, CV as well coming into this game. And so you expect that at least he produces what everybody is looking forward to see because he's lost the fight to Rafael Mensa before. That was back in uh, 2011. It was a take or knockout. You know, trust me, he's talky. He's got some big punches as well. And he doesn't joke. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you this 10 round super featherweight final eliminator. We begin with the boxer fighting out of the blue corner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the boxer with a record of eight wins, two losses. Four of the wins coming by way of knockout. Earlier, he weighed 132 pounds. He fights out of the Bronx gym here in Accra with another big and resounding round of applause. Put your hands together as we welcome Isaac the Zongo Fire. Now doing the action out of the red corner tonight, ladies and gentlemen. He fights out of the Palm Springs gym here in Accra. He weighed in earlier at 133 pounds. He's got a record of 15 wins, eight losses. Three of the wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Michael, the one bullet answer. The judges on the sides of the ring, ladies and gentlemen, 
JB Ousuansa, Michael Nikwe, and May Mensa Akako. And here in the center is Shadrach Akwe. Minutes. You know the rules, shake hands and let's go. Kakwe is ready, the two boxers are ready. This is a super featherweight final eliminator. Michael Ansa, one bullet, the crowd favorite against Isaac Douna. You know, I told you I'm expecting a four star buffet performance from the two boxers. And it's been quick, they've been very, very explosive from the start. And that was a good, that was a left hand that went straight. Michael Ansa has been aggressive right from the start, you know, delivering the left hooks and then he drops the big right. Dona retreating. And Dona goes in with, with another big right hand, tries to go downstairs. He, he tries to go downstairs, but then he missed. He throws another big right hand. He misses again, but the overhead shot, and he lands this time round for Michael Ansa. Well, I just love, I love the aggressiveness of the two boxers, and I think that that is what the crowd have been looking for, and they're getting that exactly. That was a good big right hand, and he landed, and looks like Isaac Dona is dazed. He's not defending, he's dropped his guards. Looks like he, he's got a big and a good chin. Another big right hook. Well, you, did, you did talk about the fact that the fire should not be extinguished early. The one bullet man is just coming in ferociously with all the jabs and the hooks. And of course, it's making life extremely, extremely difficult there for the owner to deal with. Yeah. Just like in hell. One bullet with the jabs trying to pave way for that um, big right hand. He's unleashed the right hand on three occasions, and the two times that the big right hand landed, it caused troubles for Isaac Dona. That was another big right hook from one bullet, and Michael Ansa in the black trunk causing troubles there for Dona. This is only round one, and if this is anything to go by, then I think we're going to see fireworks. Last 30 seconds of round one. Which is after that, you understand that really Ansa has been in the game for a very long time. He's lost a very interesting, twice he lost to Patrick O'Kine. And remember that unanimous decision and the 10-count card that he lost to Patrick O'Kine back in 2017 alone. He's lost twice to Patrick O'Kine, but I think he's been able to pick himself up again. Michael Ansai is now paving away with um, his left jab. He's throwing the jab with his left. And that's the end of round one. Well, Such exciting. a fiery contest, exciting contest. You know, the two boxes, you know, delivered more. I, I think that Dona really has been the receiver of all the huge, huge punches there from Ansa. He's not had a breathing speed at all. Not at all. You know, he's been punished. We've got a big one coming up, the National Super Featherweight Championship, Abraham Osei Bonsu and Patrick Ayi. That will be coming up just after this fight. And that's the dressing room getting ready from the Bukum Boxing Gym, Abraham Osei Bonsu and his trainers. 
trying to work things out. You know, trust me, we're going to enjoy this bout. That's the main bout for the evening on this Azuma Nelson fight night. The argument already has started in the stands. Let's see how the two boxers will be able to de deliver in round two of this super featherweight national and final eliminator. Well, I think I've really been impressed with that of uh, Michael Anza. His uh, abilities and his runs in the ring has been very, very encouraging. He's making sure that he's useless in every space available in the ring to his advantage. And he's making things pretty much difficult there for Dona to get himself out and attack the way he should against Michael Ansar. You missed that right. Big hook there from one bullet, Michael Ansar. He's been dropping those um, artilleries anytime he sees there's an opportunity. And that's been to his advantage. And that's Isaac Dona trying to go in with an uppercut. I don't really think he, he really meant that. You know, he looked very feeble. And that's Dona going in. We, we, we knew it was going to be like this, especially with Michael Ansa. He's had 15 fights, eight wins and three by way of knockout. And also Dona has suffered two defeats in eight and four of the victories have come by the way of knockouts. Dona now with an overhead shot. But sometimes I, I defensively don't, don't, don't want to see this happening to some of the boxers because when you try to go in with your shoulder, you know that you're not really much experienced going in with that one, and you expose yourself out there for a lot of the straight jabs on you. And I'm thinking that Ansa is doing exactly that, and you see just one there from the winner. Mike Ansa trying to pave way for the right with um, the left jabs. He drops a big right hand again. Quite couldn't land. And that was a left hook from Dona. Ansa still going in in a shoulder row defensive style and now uses the left jab there's a quick reply there from Dona the right he connects downstairs and upstairs with the left Dona uppercut he misses and Mike Lanza with the left jab once again to open up so one and of the he drops the big right one of the yes. fact that a lot of people really expected a ferocious contest, which Odidi did happen, was back in 2016 when Ansa fought Olua Shane. What happened? And it was a good right one from Dona. He dropped a big right hand and it caught Michael one bullet and a West. And Dona will try to fight back. Round two coming to a halt. And it was a right hook from Dona that will end the round. A lot, a lot happened in round two. Yeah, again, but we can't. you remember George Ashi's fight with that of uh, answer back in uh, 2016. That was for the vacant Ghanaian lightweight title when Ansa lost that fight. That was a controversial decision. Certainly. I remember a lot of talk about um, that decision. And to date, it's been talked about in the boxing circles, especially in Buko, and feels he's not had enough, you know, with his talent. And most of the boxers he fought against have yeah. gone ahead of him. Yeah. And you can see he's determined now and focused. He just wants to rewrite the script this time around, and that's exactly what he's but doing. But he has to do a lot of work there. I, I think that defensively he's got it there. Uh, you just saw the fact that he, he dropped a little bit, trying to go with the shoulder. And, and again, it's not working because Domina is taking advantage of that because you really expose your face there to a lot of, you know, jabs that are coming in from your opponent. And Domina is taking advantage of that. You know, as an attacking boxer, he's, he's okay. But defensively, I think there are some problems he has to deal with. Round three of this super featherweight final eliminator. Reckless challenge, three for all. And a left hook there from Michael Ansan. 
you know, fair to say he's um, dominating in terms of um, the score sheet. He's got three rounds now coming his way, and that was a good right hand from Michael Lanza. And Michael Lanza has been accurate with his punches, and he hasn't missed much with his right hand as well. Michael Lanza goes in with another right hand. You know, one, two combinations upstairs from Ansa. And then he delivers a big right hand again. Another right hand, which landed. That was an uppercut from Ansa. Ansa drops a big right hand again. The combination violent indeed, and Odona seems to be in trouble. Fury contest. And both boxes have been won by referee Shadrach Akwe. You know, what you saw was that there was this bit of a tangling there, and they had to find a way to accept it themselves. And that's what Dona was trying to explain to the uh, referee. You know, something has escaped me um, all night. You know, you can see that um, the referees have got this red, um, you know, armbands that just to mourn the uh, colleague who passed on, Frederick Gatti, experienced man, you know, big man in the boxing circles. And they're celebrating his lifestyle in the ring as well. So it's all about celebrations tonight, as one else in. And on the field now, we've got... Well, I, I think that Michael and hasn't really been that, you know, Aggressive the way he started the fight. I think that he put everything in the, in the, in the first round and now he's lost some bit of steam and allowing Dona to really take full advantage. Maybe he has a lot in his tongue. Final 30 seconds of this round. Michael Ansa in a black, you know, dominating and delivering all the big punches. And he's been doing that perfectly as well. Michael Dona. In the white, you know, and Violet has also been doing some good work as well. But I think it's Mike Lanza who has dominated, and he's on top of his game. End of round three, another good round of boxing. We enjoyed it. Yeah, I think that it's been fairly a balanced round two. If you ask. Michael has not started pretty well back in uh, round one, but wasn't really able to sustain that in round two and allowed Dona to charge at him and throw in some very, very accurate and massively well calculated punches. And I think that's really producing some sort of live into these two boxes. But again, you have to talk about the defensive cover, the dressing work. I don't think that the hooks and the jabs have been that tremendous from Dona Dona. I think a few times they're able to get a target right. Michael Lanza has been venomous in his punching rate. He's got a lot of punches coming in, beaming with smiles, and he's getting the job done. That's good. So this is a penultimate bout, and we've got the final one, the main bout of the evening coming up pretty shortly. Patrick Ayi and Abraham Osei-Bonsu. But now it's round four of the Super Featherweight Final Eliminator. Michael Ansa in the black. And he's dominating against Isaac Dona. Left hook from Isaac Dona, but it was a reply there from, sorry, from Ansa, and then Isaac Dona replied. Both boxers have dropped your guard, you're not defending well, and so you can see. Let's give credit to the two boxers, lovely exchanges. At least we're getting it. There was a connection there from Dona. Referee says it was a push, and it wouldn't count. Ansa trying to get back into this um, round with um, the jabs. Dona attacking. The footboxes are really lost some steam. 
they started with some huge, huge, huge aggressive work, throwing punches into the air and really getting at each other pretty hard. And now it appears that he's had some telling effect on them. The winner now trying to fight and he get he has answer in the corner. Answer will get away of trouble. He slides, you know, from this um, from the the ropes with the jabs. And anytime he's in trouble, he uses his jabs you know, to slide away. And that has um, been to his credit. Answer has been doing there with the jabs. There's, there he goes. He tries to confuse Dona with the jabs. And he settles in the center of the ring to drop the big right hand. And that's what he's been doing perfectly. That's the game plan. And yeah, I but think you need to really get your balance right. You're going to do that. So far, so good. It's worked for him. He's not come under trouble. You know, like his opponent, Douna. Answer now trying to see if he can find a way up there with the jabs. You know, we need effective jabs. And there he goes with the jabs once again. Don't end the big right hand. Uppercut, he misses. And he's against the rope. No, that was not boxing. And one point will be deducted from the build-up of Isaac Dowuna. And he's been warned but by the is about referee. A second time. This is about the second time he's been warned. There's been a bit of a push there. When, when it, there's a moment for some bit of clinching. Last it's 20 seconds of this round. Good right hand. Uppercut and the left jab from Isaac Dowuna. And Dona is dazed at this point in time. And so Ratchet's on him and he drops a big right hand. And he's dazed, another right hand. The connection is on and he goes in again. End of the round. Yeah. And the referee had to come in to separate the two boxes. It ended up being a street fight. Yeah, it was. But I thought that Ansar really had the advantage, especially when he was able to give the right hook. He just lost his balance. He went straight onto the ropes. He had to follow up with yet some ferocious, you know, punches there. He just couldn't find a way to come out. And now we're looking forward to see what happens, whether he can, whether Dumura can continue or not. But I thought again that he put it up. Maybe a little, too, a little bit too late, though. Maybe, yes, it was late. But he was able to strike at the right time. And that made life difficult for Dumura. He had those punches coming in at the right time. He was timely. And one bullet has found his rhythm now. He's in the groove. And the next fight coming up, Patrick Ayi warming up Abraham Osebonzu, the national super featherweight championship. That's the main bout of the evening. And this bout is seven as the perfect appetizer. And we're really going to enjoy it. Coming up next is the main bout of the evening. We are into round five of this super featherweight final eliminator. Just not run four. The last seconds of round four, really. There was something of a bit of an entertainment for all of us to enjoy. And that was one time. And, and it's continuing from now, there. The uppercut. He goes under the left hook. And it landed on the chin. And that's an overhead shot from Ansa. He drops another big right. The uppercut, he misses, and he's going in ferocious punches. Flurry of them coming in. Not accurate, though, but they are landing now. And Dona is this. His gum shield has been spilled. Did he deliberate, deliberately do that? If he did that, then now to go against him already. Point to be deducted from his build-up. What well, I did. And let me tell you something, it, it, it didn't really happen to Azuma Nelson, you know, when he was in a disadvantage after losing his uh, gum shield, it was a custom mouthpiece, was actually given to him, it was made in the store, given to Azuma Nelson, and that really made life pretty much difficult for himself, and he wasn't able to continue with that particular fight. He lost it. If you deliberate, deliberately um, bring it out, the referee can stop the fight. And it goes against you. Well, that was for the fight against uh, 
Salvador Sanchez in 1982, the first fight he lost as Manuel Nelson. And he's been unrelenting in his approach. One bullet, Michael Ansa. And he's been dropping all those powerful punches. Dona has been at the receiving end. He's not been able to reply all those punches there from Michael Ansa. Ansa once again, he's got Dona against the rope. And the owner must come back. And Ansa is still having a, a bite of the sherry. He's, he's just everywhere, all over him. And he's dominating. He drops a big right hand once again. And it's landed. The owner looks legless. And he's feeble. Wobbling now. Can... Emmanuel, I, Michael and some finish off. Uh, 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 the, the and end, I have with and Michael end it's here. My problem with Michael Ansan, he's got the advantage now. Jonah doesn't seem to have the balance to come straight into the fight. He's been wobbling, he's got the wobbling leg. Just take advantage, keep attacking, keep throwing the punches, and you're going to knock him down. Another heavy punch there from Ansan. And Ansan decides to jab this, one, this time round. And he gets him with that big right hand. That was a heavy one in the imperious one, a clean punch. And it really shook the head of Dona. How many minutes have they been in this particular position with one? How the many last 15 minutes? seconds of the fifth round. And so, it makes the something has to happen. Michael has got the advantage and he's not using it. He's also being overly cautious. He doesn't want to get carried by the flow. End of the round, good round, and patrons applauding and clapping. It tells a story. They're really enjoying it. This bout, the super featherweight final eliminator. So far, so good. It's been great. Michael Lanza. He's worked tirelessly and has been attacking all around. And waiting for round six to come. Isaac Dona has been a bit down. He's been second best. No, yet to really scratch his stuff. So we're expecting him to mount a strong challenge, you know, but he's not been able to mount that um, big fist against Michael One Bullet Ansa. You know, I'm, I'm thinking that I learned Michael Ansa has been throwing some huge jabs. His hooks have been very, very difficult for Dona to deal with, and so. I was expecting more from him when he had him on the ropes. He just couldn't finish off the job in round five. Maybe he's got time on his side. But Ansa has been all over Isaac Dowuna. Can Dowuna get back into the ring? He needs a knockout now to get this bout in his favor. Ansa has started with his left jabs. Dona tries to go downstairs with some body shots. And Ansa now attacking, still has been attacking. He drops the right hand. And there's combinations there from eye-catching combinations from one bullet, Michael Ansa. More of his punches are landing. And that's been good.
Well, I think Ansa really has been throwing in some bit of uh, jabs now, straight ones, body jabs as well. But I think that Dawuna is not really going to find himself stuck on the ropes and allow Ansa to do almost all the work. He needs to find, bring him down into the middle part of the ring, and so both of them can be toe to toe and throw the punches at each other. But yet again, when you push, you know, and the, the, the reply doesn't come the way you expect it, it makes life difficult. Yeah, frustration now setting in. He's been won once again. And he went in with some, you know, low blows as well. Uppercut from Ansa didn't quite land, but it was um, promising. Doona now tries to attack. And Ansa slides against the rope. And he gets away, you know, out of trouble. Doona now trying to fight and get back his in the center of the ring. And anytime he's in the center of the ring, he, he is in trouble. Ansa will try to fight back again. And Dona is against the rope. That's where he's landed into troubles. I think he's complaining of um, elbows coming in, flying in from Dona. And Ansa will get out of trouble with the jabs. And this time around, he walks away. We never saw him do that in the opening rounds. Well, that's a quiet, a quiet and round And a round now. six. Very quiet round. No too many activities. But I think that still is going to be Ansa, who feels he's still got the advantage, isn't it? Michael Ansa has been leading. But it looks like he faded. In this particular round, Dona came into the picture. And that's the cut above the eye. That should be worrying to Michael Ansa. I think that was when he started complaining about the elbows. And Ansa has been the man leading everything, everything today. Let's see what Dona can do in this. And that's the board chairman of Multi Choice Ghana, Richard Darko. And he's been spotted. <laughs> oh, that was, you know, a beaming smile there from. We call him chairman. Round seven. Are we going to see this bout travel the full distance? Or like we've seen in the previous bout, a technical knockout victory will come in. But again, you're looking to see what answer can finish out this fight at this particular round. Or do now we have to mount a challenge? There's still a very quiet moment there for answer. But I thought at the moment where he could have run things off for Dona to submit to him, he just let it go. And now we have to start all over again. Michael, one bullet answer has been a force. Dona has not come to the party and he has struggled in the super featherweight contest. And some of the jabs now, I think he is running out of gas. Yeah, Graham, you questioned if the two boxers have got enough in their tanks. And that was a big right hand from Dona. And he nearly floored Ansa. Ansa now is in trouble. He's his efficacy has reduced 
Yeah, starting from round six. And then the big question is, can Douna come back into, you know, this bout? There are still the two boxes. I've had some difficulties coming out. I'm looking to find a way to come out. Douna now with the jobs upstairs. And that was an aimless right hook from Douna. And now Michael Ansa is beginning to dance around. You know, some argue that this is boxing. He doesn't want to be hit. And so he decides to dance around. Douna, that was a big right hand. Straight to the chin of Douna. You know, I love that right hook. Oh, nearly dazed Douna. The jab's there, straight to the face, and the uppercut yeah. missed from one bullet and sunk. That's yeah, so you're really, really looking at Michael Anser, but remember, I just talked about Michael Anser and the experience he's had so far and his failure to deal with this fight and still looking to find a way to work it out. Late show from Ansa. But that's the end of the round. And gradually, gradually, the two boxers are running out of gas. Isaac Dona came in, you know, strongly in the round, but when Michael Ansa decided to box. He found his way back into this bout. I think Dona must do more. He must absolutely do more to get, you know, back into, you know, this bout. But it looks like on the score, cards, Ansa has done the, the job and he's doing it neatly as well. Uh, and the dignitaries are there, you know, watching. Seconds out. Seconds out. The round Round eight is supposed to eight. perhaps show to the world the boxes and the tactical, you know, strength because sometimes you're able to, you know, push things to the last round or you're able to hold on tight to the pressure. Round eight of this super featherweight final eliminator. And Michael Ansar has decided to come back with the jabs, and then he dropped the big right hand. And he sent Dona backwards. Dona now against the ropes. And that was a wild right, you know, hook there from Dona. Ansar reverse to the shoulder row defense, dancing around, you know, trying to beat down the clock, I think. combinations there from Michael Ansa. You know, Michael is dancing around and Isaac is trying to chase him but he's not got the artistry to tie him down and make him sweat against the ropes. Isaac now will attack but Michael gets away and he knows what to do when he's in trouble. It's like he's got the keys to all the doors of this bout. Well, I think again, again, if you look at what's happening now, it's, it's like Ansa is the one who's, you know, running away from Dorona. Because Dorona is the one attacking now. And now he gets him on the ropes. And so Dorona would have to find a way to throw him more and more of the jabs, get straight jabs on him, work on his body, let him expose his face, and then get up the hooks on. And that is exactly what the order needs to do. But as it stands now, he's still fighting, he's still pushing aggressively. Sometimes want to go toe to toe. But Ansa wouldn't give him the chance. But I think that the order really has worked out in this round eight. 
Yeah, Basto, he's not been able to get those clean punches. That will score him the marks. He's not been aggressive enough. He's not also taking full control of the ring, ring generalship. He's not, you know, been able to convince. And the two boxers now exchanging blows. And Ansa trying to walk away and dance away from his opponent. Doing a last 29 seconds, you know, left of this eighth round. Michael Ansana will revert to his um, usual or his former strategy of um, dropping the jabs and then connecting home with a big right hand. And that's what he's been doing. But the thing is, I think he's run out of um, gas. When, he can when finish you have off the advantage, you have to take eight. it. When you have the advantage, take it. And now it's making life difficult for Ansa himself because I thought at a point in time, back in round six, he could have simply killed the game. He should have finished off his opponent, but he couldn't. And he is allowed Isaac Dona. Is that a sign of fatigue, of tiredness? The body language just not good enough from Isaac Dona. He struggled in this super featherweight final eliminator. And we're into the penultimate round of the shadow 10 of this national super featherweight. Isaac Dona has suffered a lot of beatings at the hands of um, Isaac. If that's all, one bullet, Michael answer. Seconds out. Seconds out. Round nine. And round nine, the penultimate round of this championship, um, sorry, super featherweight final eliminator. And you can see that the two boxers themselves are tied. And so the activity inside the ring has slowed. Doing are going for it. You know, I, I used to think that when the two boxers were in the middle of the ring, one bullet was better, but it looks like Doina loves it. He loves to stand and fight. and doesn't want to run chasing his opponent. And that's what Ansa has been doing. Occasionally, he abandons the toe-to-toe -to -toe contest well, I think and decides to dance around. Well, I think they're looking for the last round, the last bell, perhaps. Oh, nice, nice. Nice hit there from Doona. Chest of the chain. But Nearly he can't created. follow up. Doona just can't follow, that's the follow up. That's absolutely the problem. And look at how Ansa gets out of trouble when he was against the rope. And there's a time for Dona to attack, but he allowed Ansa to get out when he was caught. And Ansa once again will try to confuse his man with the jabs. But Dona really has impressed, especially after those early days of dizziness. He's been able to pick himself and still attacking. Now that's what he's been doing all night. And into the final 50 seconds of round nine. You may be expecting him to do a lot of work down if, if you want to go down to the, round, the last round, round 10. Where I think a lot of the you know, wobbling legs will be fighting to sustain themselves. That will be a moment where you expect the boxers to, to really show their strength. That for me is it's going to be the tactics, if you ask me. That absolutely is going to be the tactics. How to sustain yourself in round 10 and come out of this way. 
answer. Now, you know, trying to just beat down the clock and then wrap this up. He feels he's done a lot of work. And Dona will now attack. Dona with a wild uppercut. He misses. End of round nine. And you saw Michael Ansa running away from his opponent. Yes, the argument in you know the stance now. Definitely about this bout. And how did Dona you know miss out in the opening five rounds? He was pummeled and he nearly got knocked out, especially in round six. But he's been able to stay afloat. And that's the end of this super featherweight contest. We are into the final round. Yeah. And that's Michael Ansar with some footwork. He's trying to you know, dance his well, way so to victory. <laughs> he, he knows, he knows he's already in there. <laughs> this, this guy's lives to be enjoying himself and look at the fans as well. They enjoy it. They enjoy it. Final round of the super featherweight final eliminator. So if we don't get a knockdown or a technical knockout in this round, then we'll go to the scorecards for the full story. Dona now attacking. Uh, that was a body shot there from Dona on Ansa. Ansa now drops a big right upstairs. And he's running away from Dona. That's what he's done the last three rounds or so. He put in a lot of effort in an opening six rounds. And especially in round six, that was yeah. when he should have knocked out. Certainly, he, he had the Dona. advantage. I did say, I've said it several times, he had the advantage to make sure he finished his bout. And toe to toe contest, and he goes in with double combinations. A left hook from Ansambad misses. Dona now will attack. And he's still waiting for that opening. He's been waiting right from round one. The clean punches have been few from Dona. Wild punches have been thrown from this man. Gingerhead, Isaac Dona. Well, and now Ansa is in trouble against the rope, but Dona cannot punish him, and he gets out of trouble. Well, just on the, on the 4th of April, well, 30th of April this year, Michael Ansa was able to get a take on knockout win against uh, James Norte, and that was very much impressive for him. And so, that's well, the last see, minute for the fight here. Let's see what the remainder of um, the seconds left in this final round will bring. Are we going to get flurry of punches from the two boxes? And one. One bullet is in trouble, he nearly slipped. And it's Ansan with the jabs and goes in with a big right upstairs. And he clinches Dona more of a strategy. Well, again, sometimes you look at the theatres in the ring there when the boxers know that sometimes they have the point in their favor. They're always looking to slow the, slow the round and make sure they run just around the corners of the, the ring. Last 10 seconds. The countdown is on and this fight will be over. Isaac Dona looks to be the vanquished. One bullet in the black trunk has done a lot of work and that's the end.
of this super featherweight final eliminator. Well, was it something you really looked at to see what well, was going to be a huge one there for Ainsa against the Warner, or perhaps maybe nobody really expected the Warner to come into this fight to give that challenge there to Ansa because Ansa was a crowd favorite. How's he been able to wow them with his antics in the ring? No, this time around, he was better. The antics, you know, was cut out from his game plan, and you can see.
Ali. He came in to finish off his opponent in the opening rounds. So he was very good from round one to round six and also some parts of round seven. And then he ran out of steam. That was when Domina was also tired because he had received a lot of fun punishment. You know, from this man who is dancing his way to victory. It looks like, you know, but boxing have seen some controversial decisions. I don't think this will be one, though. You know, Mike Lanza has done a lot of work and he dominated. He really dominated, you know, this super well, featherweight. I, 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 I and the bracket rights will go to him. One bullet. You know, my point is that he has not wound me the way I. I probably expected him to do that. I'm thinking he's he got real opportunities back in round six. Never took advantage of this man. Yes, he was at the receiving end, but occasionally he did come in as the main contender for this one. And I think that we have to give credit to him. You know, he did well. You know, but the boxing is not about efforts, it's about work done. So how much work did you put in? The clean punches, how much the accurate punches. How did he allow Michael answer to be all over him that way? You know, so very soon we'll be getting the official confirmation and then we look forward to the main part for the evening between Abraham Jose Bunsu and Patrick Ayi. And Isaac Dona claims he's the winner of this bout. Don't go fire. And that's one bullet. You know, still joyous. Yeah, it should be. I mean, well, I thought again that he was really didn't get a sort of uh, punches that I expected. The jabs were not too many, too many times not accurate. And again, the hooks were led to some things that didn't really work out for him. He loves dancing, isn't it? And that's answer dancing. He's been doing that since round eight or so. You know, it's been a good fight. I think we saw some. We saw some um, displays there. He's enjoying himself. That's what a boxer is supposed to do. All about bragging rights. And today he's done well. He's been able to fight. You know, it was a good fight. And it's obvious he's going to win. And yeah, you have. <laughs> the fans also enjoy themselves. Rub it to the, the music in the background. <laughs> and well, I, I think this that song has got a lot of people dancing. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> Everybody has got a master, isn't it? Well, so sometimes I'm looking at today's boxers and what they want to bring on the table. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they like they like to be part of the party. And this one has enjoyed the party more than anybody else. <laughs> and what's he trying to do? <laughs> Can you be grudge here? Yeah. She's in the cannot. booth. Yeah. This is the show boy yes, for the sir. night. <laughs> <laughs> a great moment for this boxer, man. You're looking forward to a lot of times when all these moments would have to come in. But let me tell you something, with one. It's happening because Azuma Nelson is 60 years celebrating all the hard work he put into boxing, the excitement that happened. You remember those times when Ghanaians had to wake up 4 5 a.m. to watch Azuma Nelson fight? Yeah, keep Great moment. to watch. Yeah, you have to. Soon, soon. <laughs> and that's and especially exactly when the fights are happening just around Las Vegas, sometimes you, you definitely don't want to go back to sleep again. And that's the talking point to the day. Yeah. 
and because of Simon Nelson was the one fighting. Absolutely. You know, so it looks like um, the scorecard is ready, and, and very soon we have, we'll be getting official um, declaration of the bout we just saw, the super featherweight final eliminator. With the scorecard ready, let's now get to the center of the ring where Nathaniel Ato is standing by to confirm who the winner Ladies is. and gentlemen, indeed, it's been great entertainment throughout the bout. And so if you agree with me, then show some love with applause. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after all of the action, we settle it on the scorecards. Jadme Mensa Akako scores the bout 99-93. Judge Michael Nikwe scores the bout 99-90. And Judge J.B. Owusu-Ansa scores the bout 99-94. For the winner, by unanimous decision, Michael! The one bullet on Yo, uh, Michael, what